This is a, a handy little book you might want to keep an eye out for. Published in 1940 in England, it's called Ranks and Uniforms of the German Army, Navy and Air Force by Dennis Earlham. Um, this particular incarnation of the book is the original 1940 edition. Um, it was later reprinted in about 2014, so you can get them. Um, this one was a buy now on eBay. Lucky purchase, cost me £9. The week after I bought this one, someone else put an identical book on at a buy now of £35. So let's say, for argument's sake, this 1940 edition has a price of between £9 and £35. The reprint one um, is priced at about £22, £23. But it is well worth getting because it is really well illustrated. But this one, as I say, is the original edition, 1940. It's got these black cloth covers. To my knowledge, it's never had a dust jacket. It's got this really nicely detailed eagle and swastika deeply set in it, as is all the lettering down the spine. Um, it was originally a German publication, and this Dennis Earlham translated it from a captured uh, book and in this guise it was made commercially available for purchasing English bookshops um, probably by members of the Home Guard the British Army etc because it was a good identification guide for them and this is somebody's ex-library one and it says ranks and uniforms of the German Army Navy and Air Force by Dennis Earlham and it says, collected from German semi-official sources and largely based upon Uniformen der Deutschen Wehrmacht by Eberhard Hitler of the German Air Ministry. And throughout, it has really nice colour plates, which are taken from the original German publication. This one's published by Sealy Service. And inside the introduction, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces of Wehrmacht is the Führer and Chancellor Adolf Hitler. And then he goes through the uniforms of the Armed Forces. And then we start with the Army, and then he breaks it down. Collar cuff patches, shoulder straps, uniform caps, tunics, uniforms of mechanised troops, great coats, army chaplains, trousers, boots, etc. Part 2 is the Navy, and it goes through the same thing, the organisation. Uniform caps, specialist badges, maximum lanyards. And then it goes through the Air Force. And again, it's the same thing. Marksman's lanyards, standard bearers, musicians, commemoration armlets, etc, etc. And we have a list of illustrations. So we have one, two, three, four, five plates. No, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven plates. And five illustrations per plate. So it starts with part one, the army. And we have the composition of the army, the reserve troops, retired lists, German ranks and the equivalents in the British Army. And then we have the uniform plates. And we have the Waffenfarben. Throughout this book you will find frequent references to the Waffenfarbe in describing uniforms. Since it is a complete a composite word without an equivalent in English, and would require in translation a phrase of three or four words every time it is used, I intend to employ it as the original. It goes on to describe Waffenfarbe, its purpose. And we have shoulder straps, ordnance officers, reserve officers, collar and cuff patches, shoulder straps for NCOs and men, then we have the modern uniform, now Bear in mind this is 1940. A casual observer visiting Germany today, after an absence of say 25 years, would find very little change in the uniform of the army. Two great political upheavals have taken place during that time, each of them to be the creator of a new order and new tradition. And it goes on to describe the steel helmet, the uniform cap, traditional badges, Field service cap, mountain cap, as it was called, 
tunics, field service tunic, piped field service tunics. Then we have a look at some. Then we go into the great coat, service dress of army chaplains, trousers of all branches, boots, specialist badges, marksman's lanyards, standard bearers, mountain guides badges, sidearm tassels, and we have the, the colour of the strap. And tassel what the stock looks like what the top and crown looks like the battalion it's attached to the companies squadrons and batteries so it's a really handy guide for what they knew in 1940 side arms again have more uniforms port peas then we get onto the navy A look at the history of the German Navy, active officers, then we get into the uniforms, petty officers, badges of rank, cadets insignia, midshipmen, quartermasters, epaulette insignia, musicians, caps, Officers hats, working rig, and again, another look, uniforms, uniform jacket, P jacket, reefer jacket, great coat, cloaks, white jacket, chaplains, gloves and shoes, specialist badges, Marksman's lanyards, steel helmet, uniform cap, shoulder straps, then we hit the Air Force, and again, another important history of the Air Force, organisation of the Luftwaffe, and we get into the uniforms, ranks and their equivalents, Waffenfarben, badges of rank, Shoulder straps, Corps of Engineers, musicians, enlisted men, specialist badges, marksman's lanyard, standard bearers, commemoration armlets, or cuff titles as we now know them, uniforms, steel helmet, uniform cap, forage cap. Tunics, summer tunic for officers, cloaks, coats, flying uniform, mountain equipment, specialist equipment of parachute troops. So basically all we knew about German parachute troops in 1940 was Parachute troops wear a flying suit which closely resembles that one already described and a steel helmet of special design. That's pretty much it. Uniforms, headgear again. Side arms, footwear, trousers and a glossary. And to round the book off it says it may be that this book has given the impression that the Germans take their uniforms more seriously than we do. If additional evidence were required to support this view, it would only be necessary to glance through the official regulations relating to the order of uniforms for special occasions. This consists of a series of the most meticulous directions as to what should be worn when attending various functions. It is inclined to be repetitive and is not really worth reproducing. But there are one or two of the section headings of which I am particularly fond. One paragraph, for example, describes how one must dress when attending the laying of foundation stones. Further on, 
there are sections dealing with the uniforms to be worn at race meetings, concerts, unveiling of memorials, dedications of buildings, etc. In fact, in Germany, the fighting man is in the happy position of finding it quite unnecessary to use his own judgement, even in the apparently simple matter of what to wear and when to wear it. So, an interesting little book. Or a glossary in the back of comparisons. So that's the original 1940 edition by Dennis Earlham. Ranks and uniforms of the German Army, Navy and Air Force. But you can get a reprint about 2014, I think it came out, for about £22, £23. Pound. It is definitely worth looking for. Bye for now.